Hey everybody, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla, and I had some questions about the new subsurface scattering in Redshift, and so I figured I'd dial up Chad Ashley to ask him a few questions about it and to show you guys. Chad, how are you? Good, how are you doing, man? Oh, fantastic. Uh, you mind if I share my screen and you can show me how to use this new subsurface thing? Let's do it. All right, here we go. Okay, can you see my screen okay? Yep, got it. So I've seen enough of these uh, Redshift subsurface scattering renders to know that they always use a like a statue for some reason. Uh, I'm figuring this just because of all the <laughs> little details. <laughs> but I also seen that they use an area light. It, so I set this little thing up. Is this okay to kind of run a demo? Yeah, it looks, looks perfect. All right. And if uh, you're following along, this is a model from 3D Scans. You spell it all out. We'll put a link down below. You can grab one of these models and follow along. And then just put a uh, area light next to it, and we should be all set to go. So I I, I got this far. What's what's first on our list here? And I, I actually right. tried one of these, but it didn't look very good. So help me. <laughs> what do I? <laughs> all what right. Do I do? No worries, man. Super easy. Uh, go to create, and you're going to grab the new Redshift standard material. It's going to be at the very bottom there. Yep. There you gotcha. go. Gotcha. Go ahead and apply that to your statue. Oop! I grabbed a volume one by by accident. Oh, good. Redshift, materials, standard. There All right. you go. Go ahead and toss that onto your statue. Got and it. now just grab that material. And under the base properties, you're going to scroll all the way down to somewhere in the middle uh, where it says subsurface. Perfect. All right. Now yeah. get ready. This is really tough. Drag the weight slider up. Mm, up, Done. boom. Done. There you go. All, All right. Then. All right. I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's All right. more sliders. Help me out yeah, here. Yeah, so yeah. that's cool. Okay. That's like a waxy vibe. And how is this different even from, because there's um, Redshift had subsurface, but n I didn't really use it. What, what's, what's the deal with this new thing here? I mean, basically what you need to know is Random Walk is a much more accurate, beautiful, and cool looking <laughs> version of subsurface. And it's kind of becoming the standard. So uh, it really is just like light penetrating down into a surface and randomly walking around like like the name says. So um, you're kind of well, like cool. looking at it right now and it's just white, 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 right? And, and you have yeah. that like little scale slider over there. If you bring yep. that scale slider down, you're basically telling it to penetrate into the object not quite as far, like 0.3 centimeters right now, 0.148 centimeters. And really, you're just going to be tweaking oh, the, the scale of how far light is going to go down into your surface. That's part of it. And then your color contribution from your subsurface could be any color you want. It could be the base color texture up in color. Uh, and this that's going to be kind of like, yep, that's kind of like your general color for your subsurface. But the really fun part, the really cool part is the radius. The radius is really what makes this thing look great. So if you bring the subsurface color back up to like something like a white or something, it'll be a the little bit easier to color. see. Yeah, Got yeah, it. just so we can see this a little bit better. So if you twirl down the radius and it looks like you've already got the RGB set up correctly. Do you want to show people that or do you want to just like skip Oh, yeah, you, you had me do this before. So you go to edit, where is it? Preferences. Yep. And then it's in here somewhere. Yep, units right right there. Perfect. Unit, so just change right. your RGB range to 0 to 1. And the reason you want to do that is because your radius, uh, your, your scale right there, that 0 0.302 that you have, is a centimeter. And that's going to be multiplying on the red, green, and blue. Mm -hmm. And that's going to tell uh, the subsurface how far do you want blue to penetrate, how far do you want red to penetrate, how far do you want green to penetrate. Gotcha. And so it's going to give you this really cool effect. So if you just start to like, yeah, there you go. So you can kind of see right now, uh, if, you, if you stop it right there, that's perfect right there. So like your scales at 0. 0.464 centimeters, but red, if you look at your radius is penetrating way farther because it's point, it's penetrating a lot farther than green. And then blue is penetrating the least, which is going to give you this like really creamy, almost looks like uh like, I don't know, it could be marble. It could be like, I don't know, milk is kind of looks like that. Yeah, but you can see like a butter thing or something. Yeah, thing. yeah. But if you look, um, you know, it, it just has like you're seeing like blues and golds and, and all sorts of beautiful colors all being scattered around. Yeah. Isn't that rad? That's cool. So 
Um, that's kind of the gist. And then uh, if you want to mess around with the uh, anisotropy, so anisotropy is kind of like a gamma almost where it's going to push the, the scattering further into the surface or bring it closer to uh, or further away from the surface or further closer to the surface. So you can kind of get an idea just by like, yeah, there you go. So bringing it negative, it's basically pushing that effect uh, more towards the surface so it doesn't look like it's penetrating quite as far and it's if you like, make it's, it it's not quite a volume slider it's like it's like a gamma like you said or it's it's to, it's pushing it closer to the skin here it looks like like more yeah. like a marble and then and then if i go up it's uh oh i see oh i yeah, see you, now it's really like pushing all these colors all the way through like further yeah. exactly exactly yeah. and you can see on the back um you know you start to get this really interesting uh, almost complementary colors that that kind of like oh, push through the, the surface. Side. Yeah, yeah, it's really it's such a it's such a I mean that's really what what how light penetrates and bounces around, you know, it just look, has those qualities to it. Cool. So that's um that's kind of it, man. Like and then you can, you know, obviously your base color can drive the color of the subsurface and uh, if you bring the weight of your subsurface down, it's going to just take over the actual color of your object base color. So now there you go. So now it's gray. Yeah. So, so this if you is bring like, that up. This is just balancing the 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 subsurface. Yeah, yeah. You're just like turning the volume up on it. Like it, it takes over at one completely from the base color. Ooh, it's this looks cool. Okay. So then you could exaggerate it by pushing this up. But then if you if you're just overriding it if you go full on weight. Yeah. Right? You're just overriding yeah. everything else. Exactly. Yeah, like there's no contribution of your base color at one when you have your weight set to one in subsurface. Okay. So if I make the base color, I'll actually I'll make this more like yeah, make it something kind of crazy, and then you'll kind of see it. Okay. So then if I pull pull my weight up, it just overrides that. But if I dial it back, it'll start to yeah, blend. You can, ooh, ooh. Yeah, you can kind of see how you can get some interesting uh, looks that way. Well, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. And then, okay, so scale is how far it goes into the model. Got it. And this is like a gamma kind of pushing how far it goes through. Ooh, this looks better already. And yeah, then you barely really keep it my anisotropy. I, I don't mess with that one too much. I kind of just do everything with scale and the radius. Gotcha. And then as far as I saw, it was a little grainy earlier. I think with these darker colors, it's better. But any rendering tips or you just like use it like normal Redshift, just turn up samples as you need it. Well, I use the unified sampling in Redshift, and I, I just kind of like see how what I can get away with. I guess I'm pretty lazy that way, so I usually either set it to like medium or like high or something, and okay, I so kind of leave it on medium. I'll yeah, just do a quick render here. See how long it takes. Make sure the samples are okay. So you just like like anything, you're just turning these up until it's not as grainy. Everything that I do to correct for grainy renders in Redshift, I'm starting with a like the generic buttons because I'm lazy, and then if I don't get what I want, I'll start to decrease the threshold that's right underneath those buckets, those little buttons. Oh, okay, that looks pretty good. I think for mediums, nice man. Well, sweet. All right, I'm sure I'll have more questions. Uh, I'll bug you later if I got them, but uh, I think this will kick me off in the in the right start. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, bud. No problem. All right, buddy. All right, talk to you later, man. All right, see ya.